Tis the season for white tees and straw hats. Guys, gardening season is here. I could not be more happy about it. Super pumped to get to work today. My seedling tray is doing better than I imagined it would be doing, and so that has to get planted today. A lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it. First though, working on my wife's garden right here. She needs me to do some tilling in the garden, so that's what I'm gonna do. Got the old Craftsman heavy duty 17 inch rear tine tiller here. Now, if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you are probably going to only see me wearing the white tees in the summer. White cotton keeps you the coolest. No polyester, no rayon, none of that synthetic stuff. Only natural fibers and materials, light color, keeps you cool. Also, before I get started with this, I want to say that later on in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the topic of the video, which is a lesson that I learned this past week uh, by listening to an audio book. And um, when I talk about that, I am gonna reference the Bible and I'm gonna reference my faith. And so when we get to that point, I'll let you know so that if you are not a person of faith and you don't want to listen to it, uh, you don't have to, you can click off at that point. If you are not a person of faith and you wanna to listen to it, or you are a person of faith and you wanna to listen to it, then you'll just listen through the whole thing, I guess. It's a good lesson and it's biblically backed. And so that's what I'm gonna be talking about later. But first I need to get this stuff tilled. There's so much work to do. Should start. All right guys, in the interest of saving this battery and not letting the camera overheat, I'm gonna turn it off, but check out this camera trick. When I turn it back on, all of this will be done. Ready? And just like that, it's done. Cross tilled, tilled this way, tilled this way. It's all done, let's check it out. Here we go, all along this way. Added this extension that she wanted to do more work with. She's gonna sift all of this like she did that. It's gonna be time consuming, but she is that type of person who wants to have a beautiful sifted garden. So more power to her. Let's go tell her that it's done. Your garden plot is tilled. These are all the things we've got going on right now. My son planted some stuff here. These are my extra tomato plants. Some other stuff people gave us. Tomato plants that people gave us. Other stuff that people gave us. Time to take my stuff and go to work. I forgot to get my chart so I know what plants are which. I'm gonna set this right here and come back and get the camera. All right, got my clipboard right here. So the plan was to build a garden shed right here before summer hit. We might get it done before summer, but definitely not before spring. Onto my little tool chest bin. This used to be the chicken, little chicken coop for our young chickens, and then we upgraded everyone. So I just had this little chicken coop standing by, and I was using this when it was standing up as a tool, garden tool spot, place thing. And it was going great. And then we had a windstorm come through and knock it down. So I need to attach it to the fence somehow. I also need to get my PVC pipe without getting stung by any wasps, wasps that might be inside. Okay, yeah, we're good. Got the hoe and the PVC pipe. I've been putting off getting all this done for a little while. The goal is to get it done today. I need to see my chart. All right, so I made a few kind of rookie mistakes. I'm still a rookie. I made a few mistakes whenever I planted my seedling garden that I found out after. Number one mistake that I made is that there are some plants that you plant direct to garden. So carrots are one of these carrots you plant directly to the garden. So I did not plant any carrots in here because I knew that carrots were directly to the garden. Anything that is sort of a root, um, onions, carrots, potatoes, beets, radishes, those things go directly to garden. You don't have to, but everything I found online definitely said that you had to. Also guys, I'm new at this. I'm probably screwing up all this information, so have a bit of grace here. So I did plant carrots in my garden already. However, I did make the mistake in here. I did plant onions on this entire row on the side, which was kind of stupid to do because I'm just gonna plant onions directly into my garden. All right, and while I plant these and get them all situated and organized and out there into the dirt, hey guys, now's the time in the video where I'm gonna talk about the lesson that I learned over this past weekend and um, kind of what I have been walking through. In this segment, I'm going to reference the Bible. I'm gonna reference my faith. I'm gonna reference some things 
that if you're not a believer, if you're not a person of faith uh, and you don't want to listen to it, now's the time to click off the video. If you're not a believer, but you want to listen to it, or if you are a believer and you want to listen to it, feel free to stick around and let's talk about the lesson of the ladders. So this past Saturday, I decided to mow the grass. So while I was mowing the grass, I like to listen to podcasts or listen to, I was going to say books on tape. Not that. Audiobooks. I like to listen to audiobooks. And I was going through the Hoopla app, which is a free audiobook app for free audiobooks. I'll put a link in the description to that app or that service. It is not an affiliate link. I get nothing from it, except I guess a good warm fuzzy feeling knowing that I helped other people listen to audiobooks. The book I chose to listen to is called Eat That Frog. And it's a productivity book on how to be more productive and run your business. The last few of that row are going to be peppers. They're going to be jalapeno peppers. One of the principles it talked about was your ladder. Okay, so stick with me on this and track with me for a minute. Everyone talks about climbing like a corporate ladder or a success ladder or whatever, whatever the thing is. In the book, he says something to the effect of, you need to be careful where you place your ladder because if you lean your ladder against the wrong wall, then every step that you take will be the wrong step. But if you lean your ladder against the right wall, then every step you take will be the right step. That really like spoke to me and got me thinking, you know, have I been spinning my wheels by placing my ladder against the wrong wall or like climbing the wrong ladder because of where I placed it. Like, am I even doing the right thing when it comes to my success ladder or what I'm doing, what I'm trying to accomplish in life? Am I doing the right thing? Am I taking the right steps? You never know. The only way we can connect the dots is looking back. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only look back and say, okay, here, this, 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 this went right, this went wrong. Connect the dots and see the map. It was laid out for you. I'm thinking about this and I started having like a little bit of anxiety. Let me give you like a little insight onto who, uh, who I am as a person and sort of my interests, hobbies, and tastes, okay? First off, I've always been drawn to nice things. I've always been drawn to the nicer things in life. As a child, I would often go to the library and I would read Rob Report magazine uh, because Rob Report Magazine always featured the highest end stuff, like the nicest homes, the nicest cars, the, the top of the line watches, and all of that stuff. I've always been super drawn to it. Uh, you ask anyone who knows me, they will tell you that my ultimate favorite car in the world is a Porsche 911, and I feel like I've been spinning my wheels my entire adult life, trying to get to something, kind of walking parallel to that though, of being super drawn to very nice things is the opposite end where I would love to just disappear off the map and live in the mountains in a cabin. I kind of highly value privacy and I think that it is, uh, privacy is like the ultimate commodity. So I've got like this opposing tug of war kind of going on where part of me wants super nice things and then the other side of me is like, I wanna to connect to the earth, I wanna be outdoors, I wanna do. And so there's this like struggle of what is success, what is, what's the right step? Like how do I know I'm taking the right, how do I know I'm taking the right step for my life? How do I know that my ladder is leaned against the right wall so that every step I take is the right one, not the wrong one? Talk about anxiety inducing. That's it right there, my friend. That will cause some anxiety. And I think that's what a lot of people deal with nowadays is they just don't know what step to take. And so they struggle and they feel kind of the pressure to do the, take the right step. And you don't really know what that right step is until you look back on it and say, that was right or that was not right. So I'm mowing, cutting the grass. I have these thoughts. The principle makes sense to me. But then this is where I felt kind of a nudge from God's voice saying, if you allow me to lean your ladder, every step will be the right step. And I thought, how amazing is that? Let it be known first off that I'm super careful and whenever I say God told me or I think God said this to me or because saying God told you something is, is super absolute. And if you get it wrong, like if God didn't say that, but you said it out of your own selfishness, that can be, that can have like detrimental results. But I really felt in my heart that God was saying this to me. If you let me lean your ladder, every step will be the right step. One thing I've learned is that if you feel like God spoke to you about something, it must be 100% backed up by the Bible. If you are a true Christian, you believe the Bible in its entirety, 100%, and you cannot get away from any aspect of it. So, bearing that in mind, 
if God spoke something to you, or you feel like God did, it will always be backed up by the Bible. No ifs, ands, or buts. It is the one constant, the one absolute on the planet. It doesn't change. It doesn't vary. It doesn't waver. It'll always be backed up. And immediately, when I felt this, I checked myself and I said, is this backed up by the Bible? And right away, my mind went to that verse. In Psalms uh, chapter 37, verses 23 and 24, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And that, that gave me peace. And I thought, I don't have to get everything right all of the time. If I work to be a good man, care for my family, care for the things that have been entrusted to me, if I am faithful to God, every step will be the right one. If I allow him, God, to lean my ladder, every step will be right. This has been so helpful to me through this past, through the past like four or five days, because I, I don't have to worry about, am I getting it right? Am I going to get it right? No, I'm not gonna get it right. But though I may fall, though I fall short on some things, though I stumble, I won't be utterly cast down. So I wanna read it in the New Living Translation. I like this translation. I bounce it back off of the King James Version. But it says, the Lord directs the step of the godly. He delights in every detail of their life. He delights in every detail of my life. Though I may stumble, I will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. He delights. Though they stumble, they will never fall. That's the utterly cast down. They won't completely fall if, if they're good and they're godly, for the Lord holds them by the hand. We've got some cherry tomato plants right here. Here's the trick with them. When you plant the root, if you bury the stem all the way up to the leaf, all of those little hairs that are on the stem there will turn into roots. And so if you uh, just plant them very deep and just allow the, the leaves themselves to poke up above the ground, you will have a substantially stronger plant once it grows up. The thing that I do and my wife did last year that worked out so well is as they grow up, we'll strip some of the bottom leaves off. So once they're like six or eight inches high, we'll strip some of the bottom leaves off and then put compost around the stem so as to uh, further allow the fuzz to turn into roots. Works out really well for us, you should give it a shot. So I feel like in a world that is constantly striving on their own strength, right? Politicians, movie stars, most of them, not all of them, most of them. Musicians, like all of these people that are trying to make it, uh, YouTubers, all of these people that are trying to do things on their own, they're just striving for their own thing. I don't have to strive. This is the life hack. Trust in God, be godly, allow him to lean your ladder. This gives me peace that like, no matter what I'm doing, even if I'm just out here taking care of chickens and growing a garden, my mission to help feed people locally in my, in my community by giving them free food, it doesn't make sense, but my ladder is leaned on the correct wall. And I didn't lean it. I opened up and allowed God to lean my ladder. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that made sense and I hope you got some value out of it. Once again, I wanna thank the Patreon supporters of our channel for helping support us financially and just contributing to the mission of helping us give food to those people in our community that are in need. Can't wait till this garden is actually fully producing and we can give tons more food away to people that need it in the immediate community. Also, tons of more chickens uh, that we'll be laying hopefully in the next few months. Looking forward to it, excited about the things that God has on the horizon for us. We're grateful. I'm thankful for you watching and I'll see you on the next video.